Hello everyone, my name is Alexandra Gabriela Barani. I'm a first year doctoral student at the Bucharest University of Economic Studies in Romania. The paper I will present today is entitled The Impact of European Nihilism over the Contemporary Japanese Society. Just to present a little bit of my background, I'm currently teaching Japanese language at the Romanian American University in Bucharest, and I'm also working as a Japan travel expert at an agency in Romania. Last year, during a scholarship to the Ritsumeikan University in Osaka, Japan, I also worked as a research assistant with a Professor Dr. Olivia Kennedy. So uh, those are the reasons why I chose to speak about the contemporary Japanese society today. As an introduction of my research, we first uh, have to make the difference between the two perspectives over the nothingness as a concept. On the one side, we have the continental philosophy, which, in which nothingness is associated with nihilism, which was developed during the 19th century, and refers to the absence of meaning. On the other, on the other side, we have the Japanese philosophy, in which nothingness is a Zen Buddhism thought, also referred as emptiness, and it means that every object is, exists only in relation to one another. The issue the following research is uh, stating is that nowadays both the European and the Japanese societies are driven by a nihilistic wave in which uh, the rapid changes in technology um, religion beliefs or science are shrinking the firm ground based on the values that were previously meaningful for the individuals. And the actual problem is to see uh, how was it possible for the European nihilism to have such a great impact on a very conservatory society deep in invaded in its traditional values as Japan. So my paper is based on a non-empirical research following three steps. First one is a nothingness in the continental versus the Japanese philosophy. It's actually a comparative analysis between the main ideas of Frederick Nietzsche and Keiji Nishitani to see how exactly was nihilism perceived uh, in, as a theory in, in Japan. The second one is um, the blind, the blind absorption of European nihilism in Japan, based on a critical analysis over the dialogues between uh, Carl Lewis and Keiji Nishitani to see when exactly and how was uh, nihilism absorbed by uh, the Japanese society. And the third step is the loss of traditional values in the contemporary Japanese society. It's a comparison between the pattern met in the past changes uh, with the current social dilemmas in Japan and how are they, they related with nihilism. I started with two hypotheses. The first one is that the European nihilism was blindly absorbed because of the exposure to Western influence during the 20th century, and the pattern is repeating in the current era as well. The second one is that the present uh, social problems, such as growing trend of suicidal rate or reluctance to Western values in the recent years, are the result of the current nihilistic wave. So the first step of my research is nothingness in the continental versus the Japanese philosophy. We first have Nietzsche in the European context where nihilism appear at the stage where previous religious beliefs were denied by atheism. And so Nietzsche says that God is dead, God remains dead, and we have killed him. He doesn't say that a God didn't exist, but we ourselves denied his uh, meaning. So, uh, in a general sense, nihilism in Europe states that uh, it's a state where everything that was previously based on faith collapses and the person is left with no answers to the question why. 
Nietzsche suggests that uh, the solution here is to create a new ground from the point zero based on science and development. In the Japanese philosophy, we have Nishitani, who had studied Nietzsche's theories very closely. And in his philosophy, he uh, analyzes the ex existential nihilism in connection with the Zen Buddhist nothingness. He is suggesting that nihilism is something very natural, which every individual may encounter in his life when passing from the field of consciousness, of consciousness where he is uh, too concerned about the everyday life, to the field of nihility, where he is left with the great doubt, where at the, the same as Nietzsche, he, uh, he is saying that in this context, he cannot find any answers to the, the question why he is left with no meaning of life. But the next step in Nishitani's view is the field of emptiness, where even nothingness itself because becomes empty. So every individual, every object gets a meaning from being in connection with everything else that exists at the same time, at the same place. So the second stage of my research is the blind absorption of European nihilism, which has had two waves. The first one during the major period, which began, uh, which began at the uh, end of the 19th century, after the almost 300 years of Sakoku, which means uh, border closing, Japan uh, needed or uh, was kind of forced to open itself to the European influence in order to develop itself. And so they imported new technologies, new uh, religious beliefs and uh, political directions, which in some cases were opposed to the traditional ones. For example, uh, the feudal uh, military govern uh, government, the shogunates, were replaced with imperialship. So they needed to fast learn and integrate all the information with no time to filter it. And the second wave was um, the first decades after the World War II, where the Japanese power and influence was put to questions by uh, their own population and the general trust was lost. So the process of westernization was also enforced by the American occupation. So we can see a common pattern where all the values that were before forming the firm ground uh, had shrunk and they had no time to re-establish a new set of values from what was coming from the West. This uh, controversial aspect uh, gave born to some dialogues between uh, European thinkers and um, Japanese philosophers. For example, Carl Lowit says that um, Japan came to know us only after it was too late, after we ourselves lost faith in our civilization, uh, and the best we had to offer was a self-critique of which Japan took no notice. In other words, he is uh, criticizing the fact that uh, the Japanese never critically analyzed their own tradition. He also states that the Japanese live in a two-story house without a ladder. The first le level where uh, they think in a Japanese traditional way, and the second level well, where all the European thoughts are aligned. So because they lack in this self-critique, they did not uh, managed to create a fusion between the two perspectives, the Japanese and the Western. In response, Nishitani says that the tradition must be rediscovered from the ultimate a point where it is grasped in advance as the end of our Westernization and of the Western uh, civilization itself. So what he is stating is that they don't necessarily need to create a fusion between those two uh, ways of thinking, but actually rediscover their own tradition that uh, was lost 
during the exposure to Western influence. So this is the third stage of my uh, research. The hypothesis that there is a third wave of nihilism going on on the contemporary Japanese society. So I analyzed the suicidal rate uh, from the year 2000 to uh, 2018, which was decreasing in the last years, but it remains kind of high. It's nowadays 18% uh, to 100,000 population. And also the birth rate, which is decreasing, uh, and the, uh, the extreme right-wing group attacks from the beginning of 21st century, all those are signs that there is a third wave of uh, nihilism going on in the Japanese society, which may be related to the fact that they uh, follow a path where a work becomes uh, more important and they evaluate work more than family or um, values that were before meaningful for uh, the Japanese society. And so from a subconscious attempt to reestablish a firm ground based on the Japanese traditional values, there can be uh, observed a depreciation of ideas or values that are coming from the West in the last decades. So the results of my research, the first hypothesis um, that the European nihilism was blindly absorbed by the exposure to Western influence during the 20th century and that the pat pattern is repeating in the current era proved to be true because um, the fact that there are there is no solid ground of values will constantly generate nihilistic waves as it is happening in the contemporary Japanese society. And the second hypothesis that the present social problems, such as uh, suicidal rate or reluctance to uh, Western values in the recent year, are the result of a current nihilistic wave, also proved to be true because um, there was an attempt to build a new set of values which proved to be unsuccessful. And so uh, it generated um, reticence to Western ideas. So some proposals for combating the nihilistic waves are, uh, for example, to go back to the roots with a critical perspective, as Carl Lewitt has said. Uh, secondly, to analyze the Western influence effects on the last century. And th the third uh, um, solution uh, proposed was uh, to create a new strategy in approaching the West filtering the information and adapting it to the Japanese society. In conclusion, the fact that Japan opened its border to Western culture in a period of time where Europe was also dealing with a nihilistic stage uh, made them blindly absorbed, uh, absorb the nihilism as well in their culture. And the later discussions between Carl Lewis and the uh, Japanese philosophers showed that Japan do not have a critical analysis know-how over their own traditional beliefs. And so uh, the rapid changes in the current societies are a hurdle in the process of re-establishing a new set of values and beliefs uh, to form a new firm ground. Here are the references I used in my research. So uh, thank you very much for your attention.